Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to video number five in the Skymaster F4 pair of F4 build series. I uh, got a lot accomplished in the last video. This video, we are continuing to move forward in the aircraft. Uh, things, again, are a little bit sporadic in this video because we don't have any uh, huge accomplishments like getting wings done or tail sections done. Um, what it's gonna be is kind of uh, fiddly little things working towards getting our nose bolted on. So we're focusing on like tanks, tank installation, uh, getting things kind of painted and sorted and organized in this area, um, working towards getting that nose bolted on. So that's kind of my goal and my brain for this episode. So stay tuned and we'll dive back in to the build of the Skymaster Twin F4s. All right, so we got a bunch of random things completed last night and yesterday. I'll kind of run through them here with you. Uh, there's really not any massive things done, but we got uh, the nose leg painted for the new aircraft. And uh, this is the same paint that we used to touch up the previous, uh, the, the main leg that got all scratched up. So pretty straightforward on this, cleaned it with brake cleaner prep off the shaft here, and we had that squish down all the way. Um, that was pretty much it. So we got to pull the tape off, prepped off all the bolt openings, covered up the nipple here with a piece of airline tubing, and uh, that's ready to go now. So that got done. Uh, one of the key things, that I've really found out with these legs is because the legs from Skymaster anyways have lube in them or silicone oil or whatever they're using inside the legs, it's often quite difficult to get the paint to adhere even if you're at good room temperatures and all that type of stuff, you've cleaned it over and over and over again. So what I do, and if you guys have watched some of my previous videos, you'd know this, but what I do is I warm up the part with my heat gun so it's, not hot, but really close to being hot to touch. The paint goes on just beautifully, cures really quick, and you don't get any fish eyes or anything that's often caused by moisture or lubricant on the part. So a little, uh, little tip for you. So we got that done. On the old aircraft, we got a bunch done here. So um, in the end of last video, we were painting this section. We got the paint done, we got the splatter coat done, and uh, ended up installing the tanks. Now I didn't video any of this because it's very straightforward. To put these tanks in place, I used silicone. Now, sometimes I will make mounts for them and sometimes I will use silicone. Now, the reason I use silicone for these tanks is we've got good access all the time. So we don't need to have the tank really ever removed. We've got good access to the bung, good access to the vent fitting on both sides. The tanks being in here doesn't hinder us uh, accessing anything. It doesn't block any access to the front. So saddles, we just put a strip of silicone on this former and then a glob right there. Now, if these tanks ever were to need to come out, you can get them out in a couple ways. You can pass a piece of safety wire or fishing line around the silicone, pull it and it just cuts it in half. That would be easy to do up here. Down here, it'd probably just take a, a, a utility knife and just cut it off. It's gonna be very easy to access. So that's how we get those guys out. And then also, I was just playing around with um, bubble trap locations here. For the main tank, we've got two globs on the front here. Again, we can access that fairly easy. And then where that tank butts into the intakes, the intakes have quite a bit of good structure to them. So I just put a bead of silicone around there. So again, we could use an X-Acto knife to get that out. But like I told you, it doesn't impede us. We've got good access on the sides to run wires and things like that. So no issues there, but those are glued in with silicone yesterday. They're still, the silicone takes a few days to actually fully cure, but, uh, Worked out awesome on that one. And then we painted some trays. So I did a couple things here. Number one, this is the tray that fits inside where I just took it out from. Uh, this tray was squared off, but I rounded it off 
just so it looks a lot better. So that's where the tray is gonna be sitting there. And then on this aircraft, the older one, this is gonna be our startup tray. So this actually fits, this is hard to do with one hand. So it's gonna sit on the other tray like this. There's gonna be some wood blocks here to screw that into, but it's gonna kind of sit right back like that. And it's a really nice finished look. And uh, this foams here just to hold those tanks with, with pressure against the outside. So that turned out awesome. I'm happy with it. It's nice and clean, still utilitarian, still simple. We've got a couple touch-ups here to do like gray there, cleaning up some of the black, but worked out awesome. So that is the old aircraft as it sits right now. Uh, new aircraft, we basically haven't done much. We were just kind of playing around with, uh, with things. I was kind of playing around with trays and ideas and th things and thinking about what we're gonna do. Uh, we did also test these legs. So I put quite a few drops of silicone oil in these legs, filled them up to 80 PSI and they held pressure perfectly overnight. So uh, that's, that's good because there's uh, obviously an O-ring in here sealing this leg. We wanna make sure it doesn't leak a ton of uh, air or any air at all when you go to extend that leg when you're taking off. It's always a good day on delivery day. We got our Revic order today. So there's one of my F4 wings in one of those bags. These are for the new F4, David. These are the new soft line bags. So they're a little bit thinner and uh, still nice bags. Well, actually I'm actually gonna, gonna open those up because this is the first time I've seen the soft line bags. And this set here is for my friend Bob for his Baja Hobbies L39. So that's what the yellow ones are for. But let's open these guys up and uh, take a quick look at them. All right, so just some of the differences here between the two bags. Now I go with the regular ones because they float around in my trailer. Sometimes they're, they're um, strapped to the wall. So the, uh, the, the regular line are quite a bit thicker. There's like your, your fabric piece. There's like a piece of foam padding and then you've got a heavy velvet uh, interior on the regular line. On the soft line, uh, they're a lot lighter construction and uh, you basically have a couple layers or yeah, probably two layers of fabric and then there's some fuzzy stuff like some insulation in between there. Kind of neat, it looks like they've uh, welded this, heat welded the material together, which is cool. So uh, a lot lighter construction, still protects the wings quite well. Uh, both great options from Revic. Thanks Revic for getting us these orders. Thank you for putting my logo on them. That looks wicked. Very nice. All right guys, and I can't remember if I showed you the air tanks going in the last video. If I didn't, here's a shot of it. If I did, while well, we're repeating ourselves a little bit. So air tanks are installed in the back end of the aircraft above the pipe. So we've shoved those, the pipes both sit about here. We've shoved those air tanks all the way back. They, the back of the air tanks sit about here and then there's uh, the front of the air tanks are there. So both aircraft are exactly the same. We've plumbed all three air tanks together because each of these aircraft is gonna have an onboard compressor. So that is kind of uh, all caught up now on these two aircraft. Now I haven't glued these tanks in on the new one yet because we need to paint the interior of this aircraft as well too. So. What we're gonna do is we gotta take the engines out, we gotta take the pipes out, and we gotta get everything prepped off and ready to paint. Now we're gonna do this all in gray, just like mine, but we're gonna also put a bunch of uh, BVM heat shield paint in this area and, uh, and then spray our splatter coat as well too. Um, you know, we're a little bit more open on these little twins and uh, we don't have the bypass underneath and I just wanna protect some of this stuff a little bit better. So anyways, that's the plan. We'll see how things work out, um, but we gotta pull those engines and pipes out. All right, so new airframe has been painted. We've got that all done. Now we did three coats of the ceramic paint all the way around in this one. And we also did the hatches over there, three coats on about uh, four inches of the hatch. So this, I, I sprayed this this morning, it's now evening, so this is all dry. So we're just gonna pull all of our prep off. And uh, when that's done, I think that allows us to get our tanks installed, glued in place, and then we can start running our wiring and stuff. Now we've got uh, wiring for the wings coming through here. We've got airlines that need to come through here. We've got, um, 
lines that need to go to the back for the afterburner. So all of that stuff needs to happen before we put the pipes and engines back in. All right, so we've got both of the aircraft airlines run. Now on uh, the old one here, we've put the piece of fireproof material over the airline and it goes all the way back to the hose connection there. And uh, I may put some aluminum tape on the hose connections, but um, I have good access at any time with that stuff. So that comes to right there. And then we're gonna have all of our other hoses come and go forward. Now we don't have to do any protection in this area because we've got the bypass there. That's one of the key things. On the new aircraft, We've got the pipes installed, the afterburner units are installed, and our airline comes forward and is protected. I'll flip around to the other side to show you, but um, the Unilite lines there, they come over top of the sheathing. And I know people are gonna be like, oh, that wire is gonna burn. Well, this wire right here, I, this is the Unilite wire. This is a silicone wire. I had it sitting in a lighter for over two minutes and absolutely nothing happens to it. So the silicone is high temperature and uh, no problems at all. So anyways, that's how that stuff's run. Uh, the pipes are bolted in place. And we take a look at this side here. Now this is really the best way to route the airline. Because the airline's on top on this twin, there's really no good place to have it come down. The only hole going through this rear former is the one that I added down here where I, uh, I put all the Unilite lines through and that, that hole is packed. I reinforced that hole as well. So uh, this way, I. Uh, even if the, this area gets hot right here, this sheathing is, it doesn't burn. So that comes all the way to right here. And then our, uh, our main line is right there. So that's gonna work out awesome. And I think we're, uh, we're set for the wiring in this area. So that, uh, that's pretty cool. So next thing we can do on this aircraft is we can glue those tanks in place. Now, before we install the engines, we've got to get all of our lines, our airlines and everything run forward. So we've got to get that stuff figured out. But we need to get our tanks going so they can cure and uh, be nice and solid. All right, so we've got the tanks stuck in place uh, with silicone. So we glued the first two bottom tanks in, um, kind of kept all the silicone to the outside point so we do have access to it if we ever need to take them out. And then we put the, uh, the center tank in. There's two strips of silicone on the underside of it. Now, again, the whole point of doing the tanks like this is some aircraft, it really works good to have them bolted in place. Like you, you know, you put a piece of wood across and you, you know, you bolt the, the tank in place. Kind of like what we did on the Hawk here. So the tank sits up here. Uh, there's a big support that goes across the base of the tank and there's uh, reinforcement and mounts and stuff that I put on the side of the fuselage right there. Now in that aircraft, you wouldn't be able to silicone that tank in place. There's just not enough contact area and it just kind of floats in the middle of the, uh, that center part of the fuselage. So something like this, it definitely is the best option. The other good thing about it is it spreads the load out over many different locations. So if we tried to do a mount on this aircraft, the intakes won't support it, the base won't support it. So we'd have to have a really funny setup. Uh, with the silicone method, you can have a long strip going across each of the intakes. We've got that center piece of wood supporting the tanks. Um, so it's kind of a mixture of the bottom and the intakes all put together. So anyways, that part is done and I think it uh, worked out good. So I'm just kind of moving on to the cockpit here. The way we want to do these cockpits is I want to have the cockpit installed in the canopy. So when you undo your canopy latch here, this whole unit comes out as one piece. So the cockpit will be installed in the canopy. It'll kind of all be sealed and everything. So that's kind of the goal of, uh, of doing this. Now, the cockpit on the F4 is a little bit weird and I'll explain more what I mean by that. So what I did here is I laid the cockpit on and 
traced out the sides. Now you have to cut away some of the back portion here. So basically this entire back section underneath the, uh, the headrest area. Now if you look at the front part of the fuselage, this has to get cut away. And that headrest actually sits over top of right here. Because this part of our canopy sits right there. So it's a little bit tight, of course. And then on the front here, um, I kind of mark this in like that so we can cut, get rid of all that because it's all hidden underneath this area. So my goal is to kind of get rid of any restrictions on the front and the back and have the sides just slip in underneath here and we can use probably some shoe goop to hold it in place and it will, uh, will work out good. So just kind of thinking about that stuff. Uh, the reason I'm moving into the cockpit and the front portion of the aircraft is we have to give those tanks like 24 hours kind of thing, maybe even more to, to cure up and dry. So we've got to just leave those and let them be. So because of that, we'll start moving on to the front portion of the aircraft. All right, guys, so we got the pilots and cockpit all mounted in the canopy. Now it was a big challenge. I uh, ended up having to cut a ton of the, uh, the cockpit tub away, but you can't even tell, of course, because um, that's the way it's designed. So the, the cockpit tub hasn't been glued in yet. Um, we do have to do that still. And what I'm gonna do when I put a bit of shoe goop on the sides is I'm just gonna tape these sides down so the cockpit tub can, can uh, sit perfectly. Now, um, I, I ended up taking like this much off the cockpit tub like you're basically cutting that cockpit tub down to about here. So my initial measurements were fine. I did that and then just kept removing and removing and removing and fitting. The whole back section here is all cut off. Uh, a large part of the front section is all cut off as well. So uh, it's, it's really, it's doing whatever needs to happen to make that fit. Um, I like this idea though, having it all one piece and uh, you know, when you want to get into the section, that's what you're doing. So everything's basically sealed. It is open at the back here, but uh, pretty much the cockpit tub is nice and sealed. And then on the bottom here, underside, have to cut this section away for the nose uh, steering servo. So you can see here, I mean, that stock setup comes out to about here, cut a ton of this away, but happy with the results. I think it worked, uh, worked really well. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. So we've uh, essentially completed it on the old one. Now we got to do it on the new one. All right, so this is what we are shooting for. So we've got the cockpit installed, we've got the sides taped, sucked them in, taped it down nice and hard. So uh, the cockpit now is curing. Put a, put a little bit of shoe goop along the edge uh, on in between the underside of the canopy and where the cockpit is sitting inside. Just used trusty and jammed it in there and got it all in place. So this is awesome. Really happy with this outcome. Uh, it's gonna turn out perfect. This is exactly what I'm shooting for. So, you know, when you go to take this off, there's no multiple pieces. You undo the, the hatch latch back right there. So undo the latch, canopy and cockpit all comes out super easy. So anyways, the other reason to do this is now I've got a great idea of exactly how much room we have to position everything. So this is good too. Reason it's good is so I can figure out what I'm putting on the bottom here and then build a shelf and then we can fit stuff on the sides. We got lots of room close to the back right here. And then our sides also have lots of room as well too. So we've got options for battery placement if they can't all go up in the nose. Uh, we've got options for equipment placement, which is great, so. All right, so that one's done. Now we gotta do the new one. And uh, we're basically gonna repeat the exact same thing, do all of our cutting and stuff, and uh, get that one taken care of. Uh, we're still waiting on the tanks to cure. The silicone uh, takes quite a while here in winter. Main reason is it is, if you've never been to Canada, especially the prairies, so we live in, I live close to Calgary, uh, it is brutally dry here, like super low humidity. Winter time, like fingertips, skin cracks, all that stuff gets dry, so, 
Silicone uses moisture to cure, just like uh, polyurethane, like Gorilla Glue. So it pulls moisture from the air and that's how it cures. So in winter time, it takes quite a while to cure. Uh, what I like to do as well too, is you can spritz it with a little bit of water. Uh, that helps, but it just helps skin it over. It doesn't fully cure it. So anyways, that's what we're waiting for still on this plane, on the new one. But that gives us time to get the other cockpit finished. Okay, next day everything's cured and this worked out quite well. So we took all the tape off and there we are. So that uh, worked out just as good as I was expecting. So that's uh, perfect, I like it. There's a shot of the uh, cutout for the legs. Took the guy's boots off because um, we don't need them because you'll never see them. And uh, so that worked out awesome. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna repeat that exact same process on the new aircraft and uh, we should end up with a very similar result. Now these pilots are uh, Skymaster pilots. They're a little bit heavy. The Warbird pilots that are on the new aircraft with the red helmets, way lighter pilots, and uh, they'll be more forgiving with their arm movements. The Skymaster pilots, they kind of hinged only one direction. The arms fell off because they're like glued on. Anyways, they work. All right, so we got the uh, the new canopy all done, and uh, honestly, I really like those pilots with the red heads. Looks really good. Um, yeah, it turned out awesome. So uh, th this process was no different than the other one. Uh, this one, because the canopy was out a little bit further than the other one, I had to uh, squeeze my clamps over top. So uh, these clamps only opened up that far, so I came to the front, slid them back, came to the back, slid it forward till it was squishing the canopy in. And uh, now we are good for our canopy. So anyways, we've got to let that cure. We're going to leave it overnight so the shoe goop can cure properly. Turned out awesome. All right, guys, and it is solder stick giveaway time. Uh, I know these clips always look a little bit different. That's because the video that this is actually going in has already been recorded for a couple weeks. So anyways, I'm going to flip the camera around and we will do our uh, draw for the 50 piece solder stick kit. So let's flip the camera around and we'll, we'll do it. All right, so this was the F4 uh, tail section video. Choose from all comments. Oh, must contain the word solder. S-O-L-D-E-R. That was the instructions. Pick a winner. Ooh. Newbie Wings, congratulations. You are the winner of a 50-piece solder stick kit. So make sure that you uh, shoot me an email, uh, thelightersideofrc at gmail.com. Congratulations. Connect with me by email, and we'll get that all organized and get it sent out to you. So we'll do more of these, guys. Thanks for watching, and thank you, Solder Stick, for supplying these uh, giveaway items. All right, and just kind of hopping around all over the place. Um, I don't know why. There's really no rhyme or reason, but I put the fuel lines on here. So these go from the vents on the lower tanks to the... Uh, pickups on the upper tank. We'll tie wire all these guys and then I, uh, I'm i not going to put the fuel pickups on yet because I don't know uh, where our UATs are going. I think I'm going to put the mounts right up here if I can. So that's kind of the next thing I'm figuring out and uh, that's why we put the fuel line on there. So while we're doing fuel line stuff, I can also get uh, get this guy plumbed as well too. Uh, again, I don't know where the fuel pump is going. I think it might go up here. I was kind of just playing around with compressor locations this morning. And I think on the old kit, we might put the compressor just sitting on top of the tank here. And the reason for that is we actually have quite a bit of room there uh, above the tank and in between this top tray. So um, because our pilots are heavier, if we put this in the back, that might compensate. And on the new kit, we don't have that kind of room right there. So we're probably going to put the compressor in the front underneath the tray we're gonna build there. So again, as I've said many times already, uh, this build is gonna be random and this is exactly when it starts to get very random. 
All right, so we've got a bunch of little things done here. Uh, on the new aircraft, we've got the UATs mounted. Now I put a big block of ply underneath there. Um, and uh, the UAT mounts are glued in place. So those are curing right now. And uh, that was kind of the best spot I could think of for them. I was going to put them up there beside the, uh, the fuel tank. Problem with putting them up there is really difficult to access these tubes. So now obviously we got great access to put the tubes on and everything, but even when the front portion of the, of the fuselage is attached, still really easy to get to those. So I think that's the best option for them. Uh, really no room back here at all, but this is the area I was thinking about putting them initially, so. On the old aircraft, we have the air pump mounted on the top of the fuel tank and started working on the equipment tray. So I uh, kind of figured out where we're gonna mount the fuel pump. That's been uh, screwed down. We've got our on off valve here and then our uh, pickup for the fuel pump. Uh, you gotta remember this is gonna be turned around and uh, the pickup is gonna come out into this intake area just sitting on top and then come down to the UATs. Now I left this line long enough so that if we need to take the this tray out, we could take the entire tray out by undoing these two screws and that line is enough to pull that tray all the way out. So that's kind of what I'm thinking about for access. Don't want to uh, put that tray back in because right now we're waiting for the compressor to cure because the top of the plate sits right on top of the compressor. So but we've kind of got things moving and rocking and rolling. All right guys, so I'm just, uh, I'll, I'll tell you where we're working on with this in a second, but I'm just working on the wiring here for the rear of the new aircraft or the wings of the new aircraft. Now, uh, this power box wire, I've never really taken a lighter or put heat to it. So I did on this section, what happens is the sheathing kind of gets hard. I mean, this is a lot of heat for a long time and uh, it still works, still okay, but it does glue everything together and eventually it does melt. So what I like to do on uh, the rear end, if you've watched my builds before, you've seen me use this stuff. So this is silicone um, covered servo wire or three wire basically is what it is. So this is the wire that you would typically use for your connections between your ECU and your turbine, your uh, fuel pump and your ECU, uh, but it also works great for servo wire as well too. This stuff deals with heat like you wouldn't believe. You hold this under a flame and nothing happens to it. So the reason we're gonna use this on the new aircraft is we've got a bit of a tight area here where the servo lines come through and go out the uh, the hole right there. So uh, because the turbine is gonna be sitting here, we gotta make sure we take care of those lines. So we wanna use the best thing possible. So we're gonna put some heat shielding around it as well too, but uh, we just wanna give it a fighting chance if anything was ever to happen. So again, preparing for worst case scenario, I guess. So what's gonna happen here is we'll have our servo lines come right here. There's also a light line in there as well too for the tip light. Uh, it's gonna come on the other side of that former and then bend right outside that hole. All the excess on the wings of these guys are on going in the wing side. So this, whatever we do here is gonna be fixed. It's not gonna bunch up or, or come in anymore. So um, just wanted to sh share with you guys why I'm doing that, when I would use that. And this is one of those scenarios when I would use that for sure. Okay, we also on the old aircraft here, this is the fueling uh, system that I like to use and uh, works well with my Jersey modeler system and locks in place and all that type of stuff. So uh, what I did was made a mount here out of uh, ply laminated, or sorry, carbon laminated ply. We just made a template out of car, uh, cardboard and got this glued into place and it's just glued in between the tank and the intake. So uh, once this is cured, this will just drop in place, screw in place, and we've got our fuel filler uh, in a nice setup right there. I was thinking initially of putting it on the startup plate, but I kind of want to keep that plate as clean as possible. So I think the only other thing we're gonna add on here is our air pressure and our fill line for the air system. Yes, we need to have a fill line even 
uh, if we're using the compressor. And uh, that's just gonna be all we're gonna put on that system, so. All right guys, I'll give you a quick rundown here on the V-Speed compressors. Now I absolutely love these things. Uh, they are a great addition to any aircraft with an air system. And uh, it's a really good fit for, for, well, anything with air basically. So uh, really easy to program with a jetty box. Uh, if you have a jetty radio, you can also um, use your radio, but I just like to use the jetty box because it's super simple. So what you do is plug your device in, plug a battery in, waiting for device. So it, right now it's actually running it, but we just push the down arrow and we basically on the, on the V-Speak uh, compressors, you have two menus. You've got a calibration menu and your uh, compressor adjustment menu. So compressor off. So we've got 6.2 bar. Now I've already adjusted these. These compressors come set way too high. So they come set to turn off at like 120 PSI. So I've adjusted this down to 6.2 bar, which is uh, 90 PSI. And I've turned it back on at 80 PSI, which is 5.5 bar. And they come set with 120 seconds on max. I've dropped that down to 80 seconds. Now we may adjust these, but it's really easy to adjust in our Jetty radio. But uh, this is the settings we're gonna start with is 80 on and 90 off. So, and then once you have programmed that, you just unplug the compressor and now the compressor's programmed. Okay guys, so we've got our uh, new aircraft canopy all done. I pulled the, uh, the clamps and the tape off and that worked out great. So really happy with this. Uh, next thing we're gonna work on is the front trays. And what I'm doing here, and this is part of one of those things people wonder how I get so much done. It's not really focusing on one specific task. It's always having multiple tasks ready to go. So what I mean by that is this. So on a double build like this, we're going to get the tray done on the old aircraft, figure out the system, figure out the mounting, all that kind of stuff. Then we'll make an exact copy for the new aircraft. We'll glue both of those in place. We'll let them sit and cure. And while those are sitting and curing, we're then moving on to the little bits and bites on the rear part of the fuselage. Now, I haven't joined these halves of the fuselage yet for this exact reason. Uh, and also because we got better access when that nose is off. So what we'll do when those things are curing is we'll come in here, we're gonna run our air lines, we're gonna run our servo lines for the wing and all that stuff is kind of floating around here, getting ready and uh, that fills in time while that stuff's curing. So I'm gonna play around with that front tray and we'll see what we come up with. All right, so we made the template for this front tray. Just giving you the back view first here. We'll pull that cockpit out and take a look. So this is kind of the normal process, uh, just making it out of cardboard. This is number three for me. First one was too small, second one was not big enough, and then this one looks like it's good. So a couple things that I'm looking for here. Number one, we want it to be as low as possible so we can put equipment on top and have it not interfere with the cockpit. Uh, second thing is obviously the wheel cutout. Uh, the other thing is going to be putting uh, lining material along here uh, in between the wheel opening and the top of the tray. And reason for that is a couple things. Number one, um, I fly off of grass for mine, so keep grass and, and stuff from being sucked in the, the opening here. And number two, any lines and stuff that we run beside the wheel opening, uh, it's gonna be a lot easier if we've got those little walls built up. So we don't have to be super crazy. They can just be built out of balsa or 1 16th inch ply. And I picked up some of that yesterday. So that's kind of the plan for this. Looks like it fits perfectly and it looks like it's exactly what we are after. All right, we're still waiting for the blocks we glued in to cure. So I've been working on the old aircraft the, the back end, like I said. So we've got all the airlines done. Those all come forward. We've got our, our wing plugins here as well. Uh, the airline ends have not been installed. So what's gonna happen with these airline ends, because we don't have any space in the wing because it's in the wheel well, when we hook up these uh, wings, the excess is gonna go inside the aircraft. 
So that's going to be one of the challenges is getting this to bunch up. I think what I want to do is I want to have it go forward like this because that gives it the most amount of room. So I'll figure that stuff out later though. But what I wanted to do was get this stuff all in place and plumbed and all that kind of stuff so we can get the turbine bolted in place. So we've got our airline stuff run here. Our uh, fill valve is plumbed into the UAT. We've got our fuel pickup for the fuel pump for the turbine that's on top of that plate right here. That's installed. We've got all of our airlines run forward and our compressor is also plumbed here as well. So we've got our Teflon line coming off the compressor, one-way valve, four to three adapter, and then we've got two lines coming up to T's here. Now, the green line is the compressor line. This black line is the air tank line. And this line goes to the startup tray where the fill valve and the gauge is located. Then what we'll do is we'll have this line right there come forward and that's gonna feed all of the air system which operates all of this stuff here for the wings and the chute mechanism is right there. So that is the organization of the old aircraft. Now last thing I need to do, to do on this guy is get the fuel tanks plumbed. We have to get that done because we may need to run some stuff here beside the turbine and things like that. So we want to get that done 100% and then we're ready to bolt in the turbine. All right, so we've got all of our ends on here. So our airlines are ready to connect to the wings. Obviously we've got to put the other side on the wings. All of our colors match up. That was the key to doing all this. So the colors on the connectors don't matter because one side is gold, one side is colored, but the colors of the tubing match up, which makes things easy. So we've got the back side of this tray all complete. The last thing I did here was just add a little notch where we could put the GSU plug in. So that's just gonna stick out right there. Uh, I just put Shugoop on all of our connectors on the ECU, and uh, then I put all of our connectors in here that we would need and run them forward. So uh, this is ready to install, which is, uh, is perfect. So also paired up our turbine battery with the compressor battery. So those are all soldered together, and we have those power leads running forward right here. So our compressor is going to be run from the turbine battery. All right, so pounding through on the new F4, we've got the afterburner lights all hooked up and plugged into the controller. We've got all of our airlines teed off and run to the openings there. Now I actually like this setup better than mine. Uh, there's more forgiveness in here than on mine coming straight out and then teeing, but um, both work, so that worked out good. Uh, last thing I'm working on here is the wing connections. So as discussed, we're using high temperature servo line. Uh, we've got it hooked up to our connector. We've got aileron flap and wingtip lights. Put a little piece of shrink wrap on there and it turned out great. So that is the setup right here. So uh, very, very little exposed. I actually thought I would be coming more in front of this engine or the pipe area and it worked out good. So we are gonna put a cover plate in here to protect from the engine temperature. And that's really, if we didn't have these airlines going through right there, we wouldn't even need it. But because we've got these airlines going through, we've got to protect them somehow. So. Um, yeah, just working on the, uh, the right connector here. Once that's done, we'll start working on getting those plates made. And then also we have to run all these airlines forward. All right, guys, we are ready to bolt these turbines in. We've got our heat shields in place. Now these heat shields are light ply, so they're not uh, aircraft ply. So there's only three layers to the ply, so they weigh almost nothing. And then we just put uh, a layer of aluminum foil on top. Uh, just glued them in place with some shoe goop, so if we ever need to get them out, they'll just uh, pop out fairly easy. But um, 
yeah, so we kind of kept this as minimal as possible, have a bit of an angle on there, so we're keeping it away from the back of the turbine, but uh, ultimately its its job is just to protect these airlines, but we needed to leave enough room where we could push these airlines in once the wings are connected. Uh, the airline likes to sit like this, so there's no real chance unless you push it in uh, to have those airlines fall in when the wings are disconnected from the airplane. So. Looks good. Uh, before we bolt the turbines in, we need to figure out what we're doing with our startup tray. So our startup tray here, uh, I was kind of looking at this last night and uh, we need to mount our air fill on here. We need to mount our gauge on here. And I thought that's all we would put on here, but we really don't have any room in the front part of the plane for this stuff. So I think we're gonna be mounting the uh, data relay module on here along with the fuel pump. So just playing around with this stuff as well before we uh, commit to any of this stuff. Uh, also really wanted to try and put the compressor in the back portion of this plane, but it looks like we'll be putting this in the front underneath the, uh, the, the tray we made up for the front. So anyways, guys, just messing around with some more electronic stuff. All right, so not a whole lot to show here, but just getting everything uh, installed, lined up, and ready to install this tray. So the tray's not screwed down yet, but we had to get all of our air stuff installed, which that is done. Uh, our tanks are now plumbed into here. And then this gray line is our line that's gonna go forward, that's gonna hook up to our compressor and supply everything else in the system with air from the tanks. Now, I put the, uh, the fuel pumps right there. We've got our six millimeter line going forward and those are gonna go to the UAT pickups. And uh, we've got our four millimeter lines that feed the turbines and they're coming straight back from the pump and going to the, uh, the, the turbines. So one thing that I like that we have on our website is these sharp corners. We've got them for uh, six mil, four millimeter tubing, and uh, really helps for scenarios like this. We could have made this a really long bend, but uh, that ends up being really ugly. Put a couple uh, sharp corners on here and you can get a nice bend out of it. And uh, wasn't an issue on the other one, because the pump is essentially the other side and it's got a bigger loop. But on this one, just with the output shaft here uh, of the pump and where it needed to go, these just worked out awesome. So those are available at thelightersideofrc.com. All right, guys, the new aircraft has all of its rear end section done here. We've got the engines bolted in. Didn't really show a lot of this stuff just because it's fairly basic stuff and more or less figuring things out. So just tried to run the uh, the lines and everything as clean as possible. The only thing left to do in this section is our fill line. We've got our six mil uh, fill line run back here, but we don't have the ends yet to do the fill line for it. So we're just gonna leave that where it is, but that one is done. And then here's a customary look at the mess coming forward. That's the new plane and the mess of the old plane. So one of the things we're gonna have to keep into consideration here is the cockpit sits right in front of the little nipples for the UAT. So we're gonna have to do a little cutout in the cockpit uh, and keep this as tight as possible on these uh, the six mil festo lines. And then where our tray sits back here, uh, I'm not sure exactly where it sits in relation to the UAT, so we're gonna have to do a cutout in our tray, but that's all stuff to figure out when we bolt these aircraft together. And that's everything, guys, for this video. I think it's a long one. According to my timer on my clock, it's a long one. We got a lot accomplished in this video. The back end of both aircraft are now complete and we get to bolt the nose on in the next video. So that's gonna be an exciting one. Uh, I feel like we got about uh, maybe 75% complete at this point. And uh, it's gonna be a very productive next video. We're gonna start off with bolting the noses on the aircraft. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not a subscriber already and we will see you in the next video.